How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Detroit Lions franchise here on Madden 22. We're at home this week playing Thursday night football against our bitter NFC North rivals, the Chicago Bears. We're still searching for our first victory. We are 0-10 heading into this game, but I think this is one of the more winnable games remaining on our schedule. However, there's not good news from practice this week as Taylor Decker has an ACL sprain and will miss this week's matchup, forcing us to turn to backup left tackle Jamarco Jones as we face one of the best defenses in the league. Now, normally I might consider switching Panay Sewell over to the left side, but I want him at right tackle this week as he will have his hands full with Khalil Mack. So that means it will be up to Jones to protect Jared Goff's blind side, and he'll be facing off against the veteran Robert Quinn. I could turn practice injuries off if I wanted to, but I really like that it's forcing us to use our depth at a variety of positions. I don't think we had any injuries along our offensive or defensive lines throughout the entirety of the New York Jets franchise. So that's already a step in the right direction here in terms of simulating the realism of the football season and how it just wears down on players week in and week out. So we're a little shorthanded going into our matchup here against the Bears, but it's time for some Thursday afternoon football as Fox gets us underway here, booming this one deep to Tariq Cohen, who will take a knee for a touchback. That will bring out the rookie Justin Fields. There's no quarterback controversy here in Madden. He is their unquestioned starter, having thrown for 2,300 yards, 17 touchdowns, and six interceptions, a little more than halfway through his rookie season. He will start his day against the NFL's 31st ranked defense in the shotgun. David Montgomery to his left and Fields to the air on first down. will fire over the middle. There is Mooney to the 36-yard line as we meet the Chicago offense. Rookie Tevin Jenkins will suit up at right tackle this game while our secondary will try to slow down Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney. On first and 10, Fields will go under center for this snap. Montgomery is the lone back. Kmet moving left to right along the line. Play action for Fields. He's got time and fires downfield, and that is off the hands of his wide receiver, leading to an early third and three. Lines will show double A gap pressure. They'll bring the rush, and Sean Dean Hamilton will make the nice stop against Montgomery fourth and inches and Chicago punts on their opening drive. So not a bad start for this Detroit team. Now they'll turn the ball over to Jared Goff whose 20 interceptions lead the NFL. He will start under center on his own 20 yard line. DeAndre Swift is alone back. Hodge in motion left to right and the handoff will go to Swift who will carry this up the middle. Still going somehow and finally whistled down after a gain of seven. He had just 11 carries in the loss last week as the Lions were playing from behind a whole bunch. We'll see if they can turn that around here with an opening drive score. Second and three handoff to Williams, who is still going. He was never whistled down, and he'll pick up 14 yards after landing on a Chicago Bear and not touching the ground. So that will give the Lions first and 10 on their own 41. Off under center, two receivers to the right and facing pressure. That one's intercepted. Eddie Jackson over the middle picks it off and he was waiting on that crossing route. And this is where Jamarco Jones might be a liability. Goff was feeling the pressure as the pocket collapsed, forced it over the middle and Eddie Jackson with a very athletic interception will give the Bears the ball right around midfield. So a turnover on the first pass attempt of the day will give the Bears excellent field position. Under center, the fake handoff to Kmet will turn into an actual handoff to Montgomery, and he will fall ahead for a gain of nine there. He went over the century mark last week, and now he's got the Bears at the 42-yard line of Detroit. They'll head back to Montgomery on second down, and he will have the conversion gain of three. And Chicago will have a fresh set of downs. It's first and 15 after a false start penalty. 
Now Fields will motion in his wide receiver and hand off to Montgomery again through a big hole in the middle of the defense. It's a gain of 11 and will lead to a third and short. Fields will survey the defense from the shotgun. Quick throw against the blitz and the conversion will go to Allen Robinson down to the 20 yard line. Corners playing off on third and one. And that gives him enough room to make the completion there. First and 10 from the 20. Fields with time firing over the middle. There is Cohen inside the 5 down to the 4. And it's goal to go Chicago. Detroit's defense will need a goal line stand if they want to avoid falling in a 7-0 hole here. Against a goal line formation play action for Fields. All day to throw, but everyone's covered. He's going to run for it, hit at the two, and he powers his way in for the touchdown. Justin Fields will put the Bears on the board with a four-yard rushing touchdown, and he broke his way through two attempted tackles there. And that's a nice play by the rookie quarterback to put his head down and just power through the tackle and put his team up 7 to nothing after the Jared Goff interception. If you're Detroit, this is not the start you were hoping for. You've got an early interception leading to an easy seven points for the other team. And now you'll be fighting an uphill battle against one of the best defenses in the league. And success or lack thereof on first down will heavily dictate what your third down looks like. Here's third and nine. Goff against a four-man rush with time firing to the left side. Cephas has it at the 32. But that is shy of the marker by about a yard. And head coach James Delgado will keep the offense on the field. But now some laundry on the hard count here. And it's a false start on Jamarco Jones. So another mistake from the backup left tackle will lead to a Detroit punt. And Chicago will take over inside their own territory. Second and six from the 29, Fields well protected, fires out to his tight end Kmet to make it third and two. As Detroit will try and get the stop here. Short yarded situation, single high safety, Fields in the shotgun. Fields doesn't like what he sees, now he'll take off and down he goes. Deshaun Hand at the 31 yard line will sack Justin Fields and end Chicago's drive. Give some credit to Trey Flowers there as well who flushed Fields out of his pocket. As the ball is back in the hands of Detroit's offense. First and 10 from their own 29. Setting up the screen. Goff gets this out to Swift. But a nice play by Jelani Tavai. We'll break that one up for a loss of 5. Our offense continues to find themselves in 3rd and longs. Now we're facing a third and very long, needing at least 15 yards. Goff looking for Hawkinson, and that is knocked away. Eddie Jackson with another play to end our drive as Goff made a really nice throw in between four defenders there, but it doesn't matter, and we punt it back to the Bears. Fields on first and 10 against a five-man rush. Escapes the pocket, taking off and crossing midfield. He will slide down at the Detroit 47-yard line. It must be nice having an athletic quarterback like Fields who can extend plays and keep defenses honest with his legs. Here's a screen now, first and 10 for Montgomery. Following his blockers, he'll have the first down and more to the Detroit 33. And there's time for one more play here in the first quarter. Second and five, Fields on a three-step drop. And he will find his man to the 22-yard line as Chicago will threaten heading into the second quarter. They're already up seven to nothing and are looking to increase their lead. The ball is on the 22. Fields operating out of the shotgun. He's back to pass against a three-man rush all day. And now he will look to take off and he'll pick up a few leading to a third and five. Two wide receivers right and nobody's shadowing Robinson. Fields will throw to his tight end against the blitz and that will go off the helmet of Will Harris. He had Robinson wide open, but instead Fields tries to force it to his tight end because of the incoming pressure and Chicago has to settle for a field goal. 
That will increase their lead to 10. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Goff with time will fire. There's Quintez Cephas with plenty of separation. And he will cross midfield on a nice gain there. First and 10 Lions. Just the third completed pass for Jared Goff thus far as he tries to get Detroit on the board. Again back to pass on a second and 12 and Goff will find Hunter Bryant over the middle to the 39, third and two. You'd love to trust your passing game to open up the playbook here as Chicago is able to crowd the line but DeAndre Swift is able to pick up the first down. But Frank Ragnow is shaken up on the field clutching at his shoulder. And we'll have to wait on his injury update as he's going to be checked out in the locker room. Not good news for the Lions. He's a valuable part of this offense. And we now find ourselves down two starting offensive linemen as Evan Brown checks in. First and 10, Goff off of play action. Checks it short for Raymond and a gain of six. And we get a very quick injury update on Frank Rag now. We do not expect him to return to today's game. And he might miss some time beyond this matchup here. We'll have to check that out after the game here. As Goff facing pressure on second and four. Fires it to the right sideline. There is Raymond with a gain of nine. Nice catch by the speedy wide receiver. And the Lions are in the red zone. First and ten, Kabinda in the game, and Swift will get the handoff. Nice block from his fullback, and he will fall ahead for six yards to lead to a third and four. Two tight ends on the right side of the formation. Goff will pull this one back, and he's nearly intercepted by Robert Quinn. As Chicago's defense gets the stop on third down, and the Lions will have to settle for a field goal. It's now a seven-point game as Justin Fields will take over on his own 25. Very quick throw to Allen Robinson who breaks a tackle. That's a gain of 11 and a first down for the Bears. It's an empty backfield for the Bears on first down. Fields airing it out to Mooney and he got behind the defense there to the 32-yard line. And Justin Fields goes over the century mark on that throw taking advantage of a coverage lapse. And just like that, he's got the Bears inside field goal range. Second and five, Fields getting happy feet in the pocket, and down he goes. It's Julian Okwara with the sack back at the 34, and it's third and 12 as this Detroit team tries to force another field goal. Three tight ends on the right side of the formation. Fields with a deep drop, fires for Komet, who has a first down, but there is a flag. And this one is indeed coming back. A hold on Chicago as it will be third and 22. And this Lions defense has a chance to hold the Bears out of field goal range here. Quick throw to the left side for Allen Robinson. And that will move them to the 35, which will set up a 52-yard field goal attempt for Cairo Santos. From left hash, indoors, this one is good. 13-3 Chicago as they have extended their lead. And now with just under three minutes to go, Jared Goff over the middle is nearly intercepted on second and five. Third down, Lions trying to avoid going three and out as Goff fires to the right side. There's Quintez Cephas out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and he will move the sticks for the Lions. That's his third catch already on a quiet day for the passing offense, as he's really impressed me here early on in this series. Second and five, deep drop for Goff off of play action, and down he goes all the way back at his own 38. It's a loss of 11. And will take us to the two-minute warning as the Lions try to figure out exactly what they're going to call on third and 16. Now, running the ball here will force the Bears to use a timeout, which is exactly what Detroit does. They're probably punting here anyway. A 16-yard conversion with this offense is too much to ask. So they will send out the punter, Jack Fox to try and pin Chicago deep in their own territory. Cohen from inside his own 15 is dropped right at the 15. And the Bears will have 85 yards to go if they want to score a touchdown. Here's second and two. Quick throw to Allen Robinson, who's tackled just inside the left hash mark 
First down as we approach the one minute mark and Fields continues to find Mooney and Robinson on these quick passes as Chicago spends their second time out with 51 seconds to go in the first half. Fields from the shotgun. Four wide receivers in the formation and now he's going to take off and run and a nice tackle there will stop him at the 46 yard line. Second and seven clock continuing to run. Bears with one timeout but just 23 seconds to go and Fields will take off again powering his way to the 49 and Chicago will use their third and final timeout with just 19 seconds to go. It's third and three, Fields under center, handoff to Montgomery to the left side, and he is met by Dean Marlowe, short of the marker, and that will take us into halftime with a score 13-3 to in favor of the Bears. You can see by the numbers that this could easily be a lot more of a lopsided game than the score suggests. We're lucky that it is just a 10-point deficit with the showing our offense has had, and our defense... Well, they've just been on the field a lot, and trying to contain somebody like Justin Fields, who has shown a willingness to run in today's game, has proven taxing for our defense. We already struggled to get pressure, and now we're having to send just three defensive linemen while one stays in a quarterback spy, just to try and contain Justin Fields. So hopefully our offense can start moving the ball and take some of the pressure off of our defense to keep this close. We will start the second half with the football on our own 25-yard line. Jared Goff trying to set up the screen, and he will find his man DeAndre Swift for a first down gain of 10. As Detroit digs deep into its playbook to try and find ways to creatively move the ball down the field. Here is Williams on second and eight. Nice block from the tight end Bryant and Williams will have the first down near midfield as Detroit will cross over the 50 yard line here. Goff motioning out his halfback on second and seven with time fires to Raymond who somehow gets away and picks up about 14 yards to the 34. This is the kind of drive you want from the Lions. If they can get a touchdown here, that will get them right back in this game. Goff on first and 10, taking a deep shot, and that is knocked away from Kaderil Hodge. Into double coverage there. That is a risky throw, but it will at least keep the defense honest, as now DeAndre Swift will fight his way forward for about eight yards to make it third and three. What is your call on third and short? Your pass game hasn't been in a rhythm all day as Swift will not make it to the first down marker. Roquan Smith with the stop and he beat backup center Evan Brown who whiffed badly on that block attempt there. I bet if we had Frank Ragnow in the game that would have been a conversion. But instead we send out Austin Siebert to make it a 13-6 game, 41 yards right hash, and he splits the uprights to make it a one touchdown game. So the offense put some points on the board. Can the defense get a stop? Here's a second and 10 for Fields from his own 25. Well protected, and Oruwarie nearly had that one third and 10. Would be a big third down stop if we can get the ball back in the hands of our offense and force a three and out for the Bears. Fields feeling the pressure will take off. He'll break a tackle, fight his way forward to the 32, but he is well shy of the marker. And we do get a three and out from our defense on the Bears' opening drive of the third quarter. So the ball is back in the hands of Jared Goff. First and 10 from our own 31. Williams getting the call, and he will have about seven hard-earned yards to the 38-yard line. Second and three from the pistol against a single high safety. Look, there is a nice catch by Quintez Cephas, who continues to separate really well in today's game. Ball right around midfield, first and ten. Quick throw, there's Hawkinson breaking a tackle and fighting his way forward to the 38. There's an extra effort to give the Lions a fresh set of downs. Offense is rolling by our standards here to start the third quarter as Williams will break his way to the 25-yard line. Over 10 yards a carry on just four touches. Maybe we get him involved more here. On first and 10, play action for Goff. Oh, that was trouble. 
Both tackles got beat, but it's Robert Quinn getting there first. Jamarco Jones starting for Taylor Decker is charged with the sack, and it's third and 17. Goff in the shotgun. Play action with time. We'll take a shot and a prayer, and that is knocked away. And we send out Siebert again, this time from 49. It looks like left hash. Snap is good, hold is good, and the kick is good as we are nickel and diming our way to nine points here. 13 to nine is your score, and the Bears will take over on their own 25. The lead is just four points right now. We held them to a three and out, and now Fields will take off again, redirecting, and he will have nine yards on his seventh official carry as they very quickly convert that first and 10 from their own 37 pocket collapsing and down goes fields fighting his way back to the line of scrimmage it is the shortest sack you will ever see as trey flowers gets around and stops him at the 37 going empty on second and 10 fields back to pass again trying to get away breaking away from contact and he is sacked again for a loss of one so two sacks, a loss of one yard, and it is third and 11 with under a minute to go in the third quarter. Fields to the air. Again with all day to throw, fires short for Cohen, who will be nowhere close to the marker. He maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage, and the Lions defense comes up big for them as we head on to the fourth quarter. We're going to need more than field goals, though, if we hope to upset Chicago here. Just 10 minutes remaining in the game. Goff against a four-man rush. Fires to the left side for Cephas, and that is knocked away in tight coverage. Third down. Single high safety look for the Bears. Goff in the shotgun. Play action. Good coverage downfield. Jump ball for Hodge, and he somehow hauls it in for a gain of 20. He's one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Johnson against a ball that is thrown really behind him. But very good patience by Hodge, and he timed that jump perfectly to make the grab and move the sticks for the Lions. But you don't want to be relying on plays like that. First and 10, Khalil Mack incoming, and Goff is off the mark on first down. Here is third and seven. Again, a single high safety look from the Bears. Goff with time over the middle. There is Cephas, and he's wrapped up, but not before he picks up the first down. Goff at 150 yards through the air. That's seemingly how we've been able to move the ball the best. First and 10 from the 39. Williams in the game. He gets a nice block and will power his way down to the 31. Over 50 yards on just six carries for Williams. It's third and two. Goff trying to get the offense set. Motioning Bryant to the right side. To his right in the pocket. There is Raymond wide open. And he's tackled at the 10. It's a gain of 21. And it is goal to go. Sorry, first and 10 for the Lions. So we can actually get a first down without a touchdown. But Williams will take it inside the 5 down to the 4. Second down. Now with a heavy formation, just one wide receiver. Colleen Balazs to the right side, and in he goes for the touchdown. That will give us our first lead of the day. It is 15-13 as we wait for the extra point, but take a look at the blocking on this play. Sewell gets the unenviable task of blocking Khalil Mack, but just about takes him out of his shoes. And we had some really nice lead blocks there to set the edge as Siebert makes it a three-point game. Detroit on top, 16-13, to as momentum has shifted here in the second half. If our defense can come up with another stop here. First and 10 for Fields, dancing in the pocket. He will take off and run and fight his way ahead to the 29. There's a lot of yards after contact from players I wouldn't expect. And that will lead to a third and inches. Lions crowding the line, but Montgomery in the open field will make his way up to the 46. He looked tired on that play, but that could have been a lot more dangerous than just getting the conversion there. He had just one man to beat as the Bears are quickly inside Detroit territory. 
Second and four, quick throw by Fields. He'll find Mooney at the 37 yard line. First and 10. Chicago inching closer to field goal range. Plenty of time, Fields will take off and he is dropped at the 38. On Mazurike, the rookie will bring him down for a loss of one. That is the fifth time we've sacked Justin Fields, but I think he's lost about five total yards as it's second and 11 and he finds Cole Kmet at the 18 yard line. A cold-blooded throw by Justin Fields as there is plenty of separation there as now with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The Lions are trying to stay in this one. Can they force a field goal here? It's another sack, this time by John Panisini, and it's second and 11. Now third and 11 as we are under three minutes. Hand off to Montgomery. He might get the first down, but is taken down by Sean Dean Hamilton at the 11. And the Bears will tie the game with two and a half minutes to go. So now the pressure on our offense. Can we chew some clock and get inside field goal range? As we are at the two minute warning. Both teams with all three timeouts. But the potential on our side to drive down the field for a game winning field goal. Second and seven will keep the ball on the ground again and there is no room for DeAndre Swift. It's third and five and this is a big conversion here. Clock at a minute and a half. Goff in the shotgun, two receivers right, one left. Four man rush, Goff extends the play, fires on the move for Raymond who can't hang on through the contact. Trey Waynes knocked it out and the Lions will go three and out here with a minute 26 to go in the fourth quarter as they will kick the ball back to the Bears with plenty of time and all three timeouts. Jack Fox will step into this one. The kick coverage has been good here today and Cohen with nowhere to run will be dropped at his own 18. Just one yard per return. As that will bring out Justin Fields for a potential game-winning drive for the Bears. He has just 78 seconds. He'll move Montgomery in motion. Time for Fields. All day he'll check it short for Mooney who breaks a tackle but is stopped at the 27. The clock will continue to run and Chicago will hurry to the line. Detroit trying to get set. Quick pass up the seam. There's Mooney to the 43. And the Bears will continue to hurry up to the line. Just 36 seconds remaining. They have all three timeouts. Fields will call his own number. He'll take the contact and will be stopped at the 48. And Chicago will call their first timeout. Just 30 seconds remaining. They've got about 15 yards to get into field goal range. Fields to Mooney. That'll do it. He's tackled at the 30. And the Bears will take their second timeout and set up a game-winning field goal with five seconds to go. Detroit has iced the kicker. This from 45 yards for the win. Santos is good. But there is one second left on the clock. So at least it will be a Hail Mary attempt here. 75 yards to go. Goff does not have the arm to get this to the end zone, so we're going to have to be lucky. Goff with time launches it downfield, tipped into the air, and it falls to the ground. Khalif Raymond had a shot at that one, but did not haul it in. I can't imagine why. We'll take another look at this one as it is knocked up into the air by Eddie Jackson and Raymond just can't get his hands on it. That would have been a clear touchdown for the Lions, but instead we fall to 0 and 11 on the season. 19 to 16 is your final score as a second half comeback falls short. Again, leaving us with more questions than answers about this team. First and foremost, what to make of our passing offense? Jared Goff had another really rough day throwing the football and I'm not sure how much of it is him, how much of it's me, how much of it is our lack of wide receiver talent, and how much of it's the playbook. That will have to be discerned over the next couple of games. 
DeAndre Swift also struggled just 3.2 yards per carry on 15 attempts meant that we are often facing unfavorable third downs. But when more than half of your yardage comes after contact, it's not necessarily the running back's fault. I definitely missed a couple of holes this game, but you could tell that we are starting a couple of backup offensive linemen against a very good defense. On the other side of the ball, I thought our defense played well enough to win this game. We got to fields often. I think we sacked them six or seven times, but it didn't really matter when most of those sacks were him running into trouble. Outside of that, we didn't really get any pressure on Justin Fields, and that meant that he had plenty of time to throw and just pick apart our secondary when he wanted to. Part of the reason we were in this and had a chance to win was the fact that Chicago's offense went really cold for a stretch there in the third quarter and we just couldn't capitalize with our offense. That has me reconsidering my offseason strategy as I'd originally wanted to just build up the defense because of how badly we got shredded in that Cleveland game, but today's game shows us that we can at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the lower-ranked teams in the league with our defense, and maybe a few more points would have helped us out today if we'd had a couple more playmakers on offense. Now, I fully intend on adding playmakers to both sides of the ball during the offseason through both free agency and the draft. But in terms of who's available and at which positions, it's a little bit easier to predict the NFL draft than it is to go through and try and figure out who's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. And that by itself has me considering what our draft strategy is going to be and which players we might want to target with our first three selections, which if the season ended today would all be in the top 33 picks. We have the number one overall pick. We have a mid to late 20s pick in the first round and of course the first pick of the second round as well. So there's a lot of capital there and a lot of value to be had. Now the number one overall pick is likely going to be spent on the best player available and I'm still narrowing down who that might be. But I do want to start doing some kind of prospect previews here as we take a look at the upcoming draft class in order to introduce you guys to what the future stars of our team might look like and what I'm thinking about as we approach the offseason. Now quarterback might be a position of need for us. There's a couple of players here that I've had my eye on. Max Hoodling is more of your pure pocket passer. He's got elite arm strength here, pretty good accuracy, but he is not a mobile quarterback at all. Mason Potter from San Diego State has a top five grade on him and in many mocks he is the first quarterback off the board. The knock on him is subpar arm strength which has me kind of shying away from him with our first overall pick. My current favorite if we can land him later on in round one is quarterback Bob Hairston. He has obscene physical tools, great elite in every single category. But injuries and accuracy might be an issue. And I should point out that this is a Madden-generated draft class. I had no hand in any of these players, their editing, or anything. This is just straight from Madden 22. So if you recognize this draft class, no spoilers. And if you want the draft class, well, let me know so I can share it because it's not publicly available. So next week, we take on another NFC North rival in the Minnesota Vikings. They're just 4-7 and seven on the season and might be on upset alert with the way they are playing. So that's all for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed the nail-biter there. And like always, I'll catch you next time. Have a good one, everybody.